Good evening, we're joined to Wilding Raiders TV with Richard Facey, for the Wilding Raiders. Good evening, uh, Richard. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be here. Um, I'm going to ask you just a few questions, really. Getting to know uh, Richard Facey, obviously a lot of people come and watch the games, not particularly uh, know much about your career. Obviously, it started off, uh, obviously, with juniors back in 2003, 2004 with Gospel and the uh, junior bison over at Basingstoke. And then, of course, you came to the island, played a little bit at the tail end of the season with the Wildlink uh, junior setup, obviously. And then around about 2006, oh, forgive me, 2005, 2006 season, you started playing for the uh, Wildlink Raiders when they were back in the English Premier League. Uh, an experience that you obviously look back on with fondness? Yeah, I had a, I had a great time playing here with uh, some guys that, you know, I would consider to be uh, Wildlink Raiders legends. Got to be, uh, to experience some time with Steve Ganaway giving me advice and Jason Coles and Chris Crombie, Brian McLaughlin, top rate players and I think I took a lot of experience from having them work with me and I think they really helped me out with a lot of things. I try and use a lot of the stuff that they taught me back then and carried that forward and try to be more of a leader myself now using that stuff. So. And of course the following season 2006-2007 you played another handful of games for the Raiders and then back into the 2007-8 season you had the opportunity to go to Canada and play for Banff Academy. How did that come about? Um, I just went and did my homework and tried to find some way of getting uh, get an opportunity to try and play pro somewhere I thought I'd g give myself an opportunity to go out to Canada try and improve my game and become a better player and uh, I got on the internet looked up teams started making phone calls started sending emails and uh, Banff seemed like the right, right place for me and I liked the coaching staff there I had three great years there actually I ended up being the captain there uh, for a long part of the time that I was there uh, met some great guys and I really enjoyed myself and I wouldn't take it back for anything it was the best thing I've ever done obviously a big culture difference with Canadian hockey and of course in the UK what was the biggest things you noticed that you had to adjust to when you started playing over there? Well, I, I, leaving this country I felt like I was uh, I was a pretty good player at the time in, in England I was a high skilled player I was looking to score goals quite a lot that was kind of the role I, I would put, I put myself in and uh, getting out there I found that the game was just a lot more physical I just had to spend my time uh, getting beat up a lot getting hit in the corners getting bashed around and I found out my skills weren't as good as I thought they were so it's a, it's, a, it's a big step up, it's a lot faster and you know, every 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 man and his dog's got skates and have been skating since they're three years old and so there's a huge uh, increase in pace and tempo. And, and of course obviously thing. forward in a couple of seasons after your two or three seasons there, very successful in, obviously in Canada, you came back to the Wilding Raiders in the 2010-11 season when they dropped to the English National League. Um, obviously the first season the team didn't do particularly well, it came mid-table, uh, and then but from then on pretty much we've been pretty much top of the table and in the top three for the last three or four seasons and you've been a 20 goal season man at least in all your seasons here. Um, some people describe you as a power forward, some people say a playmaker, a lot of thoughts across the league that you're a very underrated player and a lot of people said that when you played alongside Joe Round, take out Round and you wouldn't be such a dominant player. Well, obviously last season 60 points will testify that that wasn't the case. What's your thoughts on those uh, uh, perceptions? Well. It's hard for me to answer that question. I have lots of confidence in my ability. I think I'm a good player in, the, in this league. Um, I can't say I'm underrated, I think, you know, or, or overrated. I think I just go out and I try and do the best thing for my team to win. I think some people can get caught up with looking at who gets the most points every night and all those kind of things. And, you know, you, you just want to win. I want to win trophies again. Like you said, three years ago we won the league and I want to get back into that position. I'd trade. 100 points in a season if we win the if we win the league this year. So that to me is just the most important thing about it, is trying to give something back to the people that come here and want to see us succeed. But you know all the boys in the room, we all want to succeed as well. Of course, talking about and this so season, uh, you know you've got newcomers, obviously Steve Osman, uh, Alex Barker. How has the transition been for those new guys coming into the team? I hate to ask them, but I think they they fit in well. They're good players. You know, good players always seem to play well, and that's. Uh, that's what we get them in for. That's why we get. That's why we have the guys coming in from other places in the country and try and get them down here. I think Ozzy's made a big difference. He's strong and gets to the front of the net. And Abar's just a straight sniper. So, I mean, I think they've. I think they've fitted in well to our systems, and I hope they're enjoying themselves here. And obviously, just on a final note, you're looking to obviously you know, try and win the league title for the first time in two or three seasons, obviously. And you've got the cup competitions, obviously. A couple of weekends just gone, not to want to sort of dwell on too much, obviously. But you've got to take the positives in some of those games that, obviously, even though the results and performances wasn't what you wanted, there's some couple of key players that, you know, that did well. Obviously, Kieran Annis line did particularly well. In some respects, when you see the other lines stepping up, is that a good thing for you to see when you sort of see the third line stepping up and doing a job? I think, I think they step up every night. I think that when everyone else is playing badly, everyone gets to see it more. They, they, we've got good players all the way through our squad. 
you know, our, our, our first and second line weren't playing well, so our third line got on the ice a lot more and showed that they can do that stuff for a longer period of time in games. We've got really good players running through a squad right now. I think we're probably the strongest squad I've played on here. And uh, pretty right. I, I wasn't here the year we finished mid-table, actually, and I've played on some pretty good squads we've had here, and I think this is probably the best one. Got really good players. We're getting good contributions from guys that you might not have expected even to be here at the beginning of the year, like Nimby and Kieran's really stepping up, like you said. Two man of the matches in one weekend and a goal in each game. So I think we're in a really good spot, and I always take positives from you know positive play. But it's hard to take a hard to take a positive from a real kicking. But uh, we know we're better than that. We've had better games than that against other teams, and we're going to move forward and. We definitely want to be in every competition that we enter. So, uh, just the final lines, quick little quick fire round for you now. Uh, one word answers. Favorite rink to play in? Uh, what Ride Arena. Uh, least favorite rink? Uh, Gosport. Favorite player that you played against? In terms of you know, who you think uh, you love playing against? You know, the challenge, uh, you know, the tough or in, in our league? Yep. Um, I think it's always a challenge playing against Julian Smith, probably. There's a lot of good, or Tibor Schneider. There's a lot of good defenders in our league. I just like getting around people in the, in the battle. So those two guys are pretty tough. Toughest player you've played against? Ever. Um, oh, man. There have been some tough guys. I mean, Norm Pennington's a very tough, middle sized guy. He often gets overlooked. He's just a powerhouse. Uh, playing against him was tough back in his slough days. And Nicky Chin, obviously, is a Big tough animal. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of guys. It's hard to make a decision. <laughs> and uh, um, finalising, uh, what's your uh, sort of ultimate achievement with hockey in general? Are you looking to sort of progress up the la other ladder in terms of no, I'm, the I'm, level? I'm, you quite I'm happy here. Where you are? I'm here now. I've, uh, you know, I've, I've got stuff going on in my own life. I'm not obviously no one here is a professional hockey player, um, but I, I really love playing for this team. I've got really fond memories of coming to watch the team play when I was younger. Like I said, watching legends like Tony Blaze play and. Steve Ganaway and um, you know I want to be here for the long haul and get some silverware and hopefully put my name in with those guys in the future. So brilliant! Thanks very much, Richard. Okay, thanks very much, Chris. Cheers. Okay. Thank you,